What is up guys, welcome back to another video and today it is the second of the Q&As. So last time I uploaded the Q&A was about two weeks ago um, and what I did was say if you want to ask another question for this particular video then leave it in the comments down below. So the same will apply to this video. If you want to ask a question for the next Q&A then leave it in the comments down below, um, whatever it is and I will be picking the five top questions because if I do any more than that it could run over and it'll be like a 30 40 minute video um, so five questions if you see a question that you want to be asked give it a thumbs up and I'll choose the five top rated comment uh, questions or just the five if there isn't any top rated ones the five that look the most interesting and I haven't covered before so now we got that out of the way let's get into today's video so it is the evening here in the garden of tranquility and I've just finished work, which kind of leads me on to the first question, which is from Victor Mayer, and he asks, what do I do for a living? So I am a student currently, um, although I'm now on a placement year, so I'm, I'm working out for a year in between my degree, so I've done two years, and I've got to go back for my last year, but now I'm currently working full time at nine to five, um, five days a week at a web design agency. So. I'm sat most of the day, I, there is a standing desk so I kind of alternate between that and sitting but essentially I'm staring at a computer designing websites. So that's what I'm currently doing so usually or ideally it'd be nice not to work so I could really focus on training, get more sleep because I'd have to wake up at 6.30 in the morning to go to work. I can get some proper recovery in but for the moment I've got the challenge of working and having to still maintain this kind of lifestyle of making good food and training and recovering. So that's what I currently do for a living. The next question comes from Gift of a Joyful Life. He asks, what exercises did you perform when starting and how did you progress? I can't do anything besides the basics, push-ups, pull-ups, lifts, squats. The thing is though, the basics essentially, that is how it works. You, you've got to do the basics and then you progress from there. I mean, when I started, I was very into powerlifting. I lost a lot of weight, uh, so I wasn't very strong. So I started doing some pretty basic stuff as well. That was things like dips, push-ups, pull-ups. Um, I didn't really experiment with handstands until maybe like a year into my body weight training. What I would, would recommend is people like Gymnastic Wads. Uh, he does a lot of great tutorials on progressions for a lot of different skills. Nail the basics, that is probably the fundamental. Hit those basics, get them nailed, and just have a look around on YouTube, see things, try things. There isn't really, a, there is linear progressions for skills. So say you want to master the planche, you have to be able to do a planche lean for 30 to 60 seconds. That's kind of, you need to nail that on the head, and then you can start moving up to um, a tuck planche, the pseudo planche push-ups, the advanced tuck planche, the frog planche, etc. So. Definitely have a little bit of a research into progressions. Stick with the basics for the moment. Uh, if you're really new to this, I would recommend sticking with a full body split and getting that frequency in there. As you progress, you can move on to more of an upper lower split. Um, so you can spend a bit more time targeting certain movements. But as a general base point, I would recommend just getting a base level of strength in pushing, pulling, movement. So what you want to focus on are all those different ranges of motion. So you want to get a good vertical pull, so a pull up, a good vertical push, so an overhead press or a handstand push up against a wall or something, or just some pipe push ups. Um, you want to get a good horizontal pull in that direction. So that would be like a body weight row slash Australian pull up slash maybe some front lever progressions. Uh, you also want to get a good horizontal push. So that would be push ups in their basics moving on to the planche. And um, then also obviously the basic body weight, lower body movements, and that would be stuff like deadlifts, squats, really primal movements. So make sure you've got some good basics and then start moving up from there. This is a really kind of hard question, it's very vague, um, but doing basics, there isn't anything wrong with that. We've all got to do basics to get to the more advanced stuff. So just keep doing what you're doing, eventually you'll get strong. Just do some research, have a look at some videos, and just try stuff out and experiment. So the next question comes from Kenneth Orn. I hope I pronounced that right. It's got like an umlaut above the top. Um, he says, hey Tom, how hard is front splits compared to let's say a full pike? 
or rather if I can do a full pike how far am I from the front splits. The difference between full pike and front splits is that front splits is a combination of your leg being able to go behind you and then the pike is your leg going in front of you. So you've got the combination of the two, you need good hip flexor, quad mobility and you also need good glute and hamstring mobility. So full pike is just really a test of your lower back, um, hip and hamstring flexibility and then you're going to add that additional complexity on top with having to throw in hip flexor mobility in there as well. So if you are looking to get from a full pike to say a front split, one would be to start stretching your hip flexor and your quads and opening up your front side of your body. And um, that would be doing stretches like lunges, um, lunges with a bent knee, so against a chair or a wall. It's a really, really good stretch to get dig in there. Um, and then just actually attempting a assisted front split hold to getting as low as you can in that front split position, maybe getting a box either side to support yourself and just trying to hold it there. Um, if you want to go down the more loaded stretching route, then you can do some loaded front split holds, which are essentially the same as a static one, except you're not going to let your knee touch the floor and you're going to be trying to balance on your heel and your toe. So it's going to be an active hold, you're going to be building some strength rather than simply stretching out those muscles. Again, if you want more information about this, I will link over to Emmett Lewis in the description down below. He has some really, really great resources on loaded stretching and improving mobility. To come back to your question, having a full pike is a really, really good start for front splits, but you also need to have that hip flexor mobility. So start working on that, kind of supersetting the two together, making sure you're working both of them at the same time to ensure an even development. Uh, just a quick tip, if I mention anything in this video, I'll also be putting it in the description down below, links to relevant articles and things that might be helpful for you to check out. So, Selyu, Selyo Didify, I can't read. He basically says, love on the channel, tips or exercises in order to work on getting a solid freestanding handstand. Anytime I attempt one without a wall, I either overshoot and fall forwards or don't push hard enough. I had this question from an online client not too long ago and what I did refer him to was the Edo Portal Loco Motion Routine in which he does these kind of handstand walks where he walks at set distance and each time he kicks up into a handstand, tries to hold it briefly, comes back down then kicks up with the opposite leg and you keep doing that over a distance. So what you're doing is you're training that kick up that um, to find that sweet spot. Um, that's a really, really good technique to start learning where to kick up in your handstand. Um, for practicing the free standing handstand, what I would recommend is time. You really need to put as much time as you can into that balancing position. It's like learning to walk in on your hands. So in the same way as with your feet, if you go forward you kind of push onto your toes, if you go back you're on your heels, or with your hands it's the same thing. If you go in forward you push from your fingertips, push and go back you push from your, heel, uh, from your palms. So just figuring that out is all about spending time. Probably one of the most helpful techniques that I've seen doing that is uh, a wall assisted handstand and what you're going to do is you're going to let one leg off come off the wall with one leg supporting and then keep trying to take that leg off the wall balancing for a brief second and then if you feel like you're going to fall put the leg back on the wall and just go back to a rest and maybe do sets of like three sets of like 60 seconds in that position spending as much time as you can free balancing yourself keeping keep bringing that leg on and off the wall keep finding that center of balance and I promise you, if you just keep going at it, practice every day. Uh, if you have some sore wrist, then take a day off, but it's all about spending time in that position. So just keep trying. Um, handstand is all about perseverance. So that's one helpful tip for you, hopefully, as well as the local motion drill. Again, links in the description down below to some examples. And our final question comes from Genga Kane. And he says, have you ever had any issues with lack of ankle at slash dorsal, uh, sorry, lack of ankle dorsal flexion. So what he's talking about here is lack of ability for your knee to go past your sort of ankle. So it's in that range of motion, up across that Achilles tendon, usually into your calf, maybe into your toe as well, that kind of limited range. You often see this with people when they try to squat, they can't get down low enough, they end up pushing more onto their toes. That's why a lot of people use the Olympic lifting shoe as some assistance when performing the squat. So the way I did this is I did Edo's 30-30 squat challenge. So you spend 30 minutes a day in a squat for 30 days. Um, I did this maybe like two years ago now. Um, I started off with maybe sets of one minute throughout the day. So 30 sets of one minute throughout the day. And by the end of it, I was eating my dinner off um, a small table, sat there for 30 minutes like it's no problem. And 
I mean, that in itself is great conditioning for getting that dorsal flexion. Um, you can also pair this with an exercise from the legendary book, Becoming a Supple Leopard. This thing is like a bible for mobility. Here he has a nice little drill which I'll put up over me talking now, in which he uses a toe dorsal flexion, um, dorsal flexion, sorry, uh, technique, and you're kind of on your knees and you're just rolling back and forward over your toe. Um, really focusing on your toe here because uh, there's kind of in mobility you have these chains and there's the whole posterior chain uh, which kind of runs all the way up your back um, so the idea that everything is connected in one single chain so you might have poor ankle mobility but that could be due to a tightness in some completely different place um, so I did actually have a little bit of an issue with my right big toe uh, and that is why I couldn't squat properly but just doing the 30 day challenge sorted that for me and um, you can also throw in that drill that I just gave you an example of um, as well to improve your flexibility and I would recommend regularly stretching your calves um, which is also a primer for uh, Emmett Lewis's head to toe recommendations. So I'll, I'll put both of those up on the screen as well as some links down below to some relevant articles that I found. So that is it for today's video guys. I hope you found this informative and entertaining. As always everything I talk about in today's video I'll put some relevant links under headings in the description down below for you to have another look at and for reference. Um, if you have a question that wasn't answered in today's video which there are so many of because this is kind of an endless topic we could go down um, just leave them down below and the top rated comments or the five best comments if we don't have the top rated ones will get answered in next week's q and I'm going to start trying to do these midweek as well as in tutorial slash exercise video at the weekends. Um, this week I'm on a course studying uh, Paul Check's holistic lifestyle coach course. So hopefully I have some cool things to share for you from that with you. But that's been it for today guys. If you enjoyed this video, hit the thumbs up. As I said, leave a comment down below if you have any more questions. Uh, but have a strong week and peace.